My job has become a little more easier given the context that uh, the previous speaker set up beautifully. I think there was a conversation about caste and, uh, you know, the discrimination. We take it to another different level uh, with the Tribal Health Collaborative. Um, how does this move? Yeah. Okay, now this is not really an advertisement for uh, uh, THAR, but uh, we did have an opportunity to go on a wonderful uh, experiential field visit to a large number of uh, tribal areas. And there's a little background to this. So the context here is that um, in Piramal Foundation, about 10 years ago, we set up a small program in a place called Araku Valley, uh, which is, uh, of course, known for coffee, Araku coffee. Most of you would have heard of Araku coffee, but it also has a problem. And the problem is very high maternal deaths. And that is what we tried to address through a small intervention in that area. And we said that uh, we will try and reduce maternal deaths in that population. We worked with about 50,000 people uh, through that initiative. And uh, in about seven years, we were actually able to see that the maternal deaths had come down to zero in that population among those who we had registered. This is exactly the feeling that I had. Wow, this is great. We've cracked it. Uh, we should probably be given a Nobel Prize for that. And then we actually went out, uh, and this is really that, which is going out and trying to understand what are the different challenges faced by tribal communities across the country. So we went across multiple states, multiple organizations, large number of tribal peoples. We met individuals. And that's how the Tribal Health Collaborative really uh, began. So. Um, just to set the context, about 30% of all tribal peoples across the world live in India. And that's a huge number. And when you actually translate it, it becomes 100 million. And the 100 million tribal peoples actually reside in India, all of them unfortunately grouped under one word, which is scheduled tribe. Right? And that's the problem. It's a heterogeneous group, no longer should be called a scheduled tribe or tribal people, but tribal peoples, because it comprises of large number of communities which are very different from each other, right? And that's the problem that we are talking about. There are more than 700 individual unique tribal communities. They speak more than 400 different languages. Their cultures, customs, all of them are very different. Uh, and um, most of these tribal communities, tribal peoples, they live in rural, difficult, inaccessible areas. And because of these challenges that are there, the health outcomes of these populations are poor. So when I say health outcomes, I'm referring to the population in terms of maternal deaths being very high compared to the non-tribal population. But what is more a simpler way to address it is that the life expectancy of a tribal individual in India is about four years less as compared to non-tribal people. And we ask this question, why? Why should an individual born in a particular tribe in India have a life expectancy which is four years less as compared to somebody who's born in a non-tribal household in the same country? From there, we began the journey of really understanding tribal people's challenges. And what we also realized was about 10% of the tuberculosis is contributed by tribal peoples, almost 50% of all malarial deaths in India happen among tribal peoples, right? I don't know if any of you have really seen uh, individuals suffering from malaria in Bangalore. It's very, very uh, reduced. It's very low now. But actually, if you go to uh, those people who are suffering from malaria uh, and who are dying specifically in the central part of the country, you will find most of those people come from tribal communities, right? And that is where... Uh, we tried to dissect out what are the real challenges that the tribal communities face. It's obviously multi-pronged issues that they face. Firstly, um, accessibility, huge challenge, right? The, um, we were talking about, I think uh, Mr. Paramayar spoke about the community angle and how he had to actually go to villages to get these toilets uh, fit and um, made sure that people start using it. But even now, if you go to tribal communities in various remote locations in the country, there are no toilets. They just don't use the toilets. There are no toilets at all. And so access, and I'm just talking about toilets, but in reality, 
if you look at even healthcare services to access health and wellness centers, to access primary health centers, to access hospitals, it's very difficult for many of these people who live in remote locations. The context of the fact that um, in the process of health plan development or uh, setting up these health and wellness centers or primary health centers or any of these hospitals, community voices or tribal people's voices are really not taken into account for multiple reasons. I don't know if you've seen health and wellness centers. I'm just kind of referring to that right now. But these are really two-storied buildings, beautifully constructed. The same kind of branding, if you're an MBA student, it's great to look at it from a branding perspective. It's like the health McDonald's, right? So you go there, you get this, 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 and that's how it functions. But in reality, a lot of the tribal peoples do not go to these health and wellness centers because they don't relate to it. If you actually look at the um, understanding of health among tribal peoples, it's very holistic, very natural, driven by their customs, driven by their culture, and unfortunately in our public health system, we are not integrating any of that. We are providing a simple two-storied building for provision of healthcare services, which is not acceptable. So a lot of the tribal peoples don't even use these facilities because of that. Social discrimination, I think we heard a lot this morning. I don't want to stress on that, but a lot of discrimination exists, not just um, you know, in, the, in the general population, but also among doctors and healthcare providers in the facilities where services are provided. There are a lot of discriminations that the tribal community peoples have to face. In fact, there have been instances when tribal peoples actually uh, feel that they are not welcome in any hospital or healthcare facility and hence do not actually uh, go to the facility at all. And by the time the patient is at the you know, final stage of life, uh, about to die, that's when they really don't have an opportunity or any other alternative, that's when they run to the hospital. And that's, the, uh, that's because of the discrimination that they face. Uh, obviously, the amount of information that we have about tribal communities is very less. Our understanding of tribal peoples is very less. The tribal people's understanding of us is also very less. And so um, we really want to get more understanding of tribal communities because be before we start designing and uh, you know, uh, involving them in the programs itself. Limited resources, obviously we know the uh, kind of resources that we have to address uh, the population that is at, uh, at question here. But one very important piece is also about the customization of the policies for tribal communities. That is very, very limited and that's another important reason for this kind of a poor health outcome in the population. So um, the reason why I said that there is a multi-pronged issue is also because the solution, therefore, cannot just be a health system-driven or any just a system-driven approach, but to involve different players, different stakeholders, different partners, tribal communities themselves, government, and all of them. That is why the collaborative was the idea that we came up with, and we called that the Tribal Health Collaborative. We launched a collaborative in partnership with the government of um, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Ministry of Tribal Affairs, uh, other partners who are all uh, part of the collaborative on 7th of April, which is the World Health Day uh, in 2021. And uh, the reason we chose 7th April is obviously because it's World Health Day, but the idea of the Tribal Health Collaborative was also to look beyond health and look at social determinants of health. This forum is really a lot of the education uh, discussions that have been going on. But I think education and health are inextricably linked. And unless we address both, there's no way we can really make a great progress. So the Tribal Health Collaborative's agenda is also to look at bring partners to address different aspects and different determinants of health. So um, when Kushbu spoke with me about the Tribal Health Collaborative, I asked her this question, why am I going to speak in an education forum and what's my... Uh, uh, you know, incentive for it. Uh, what we really discussed was that what is the core principle of building a collaborative is something that can be used and uh, applied to different facets, including education. So what we followed as a principle or as a set of principles to set up a collaborative were basically these, which is firstly to identify organizations, people, government, all of whom whose vision and alignment 
to be in the same direction. And that's the biggest challenge in setting up a collaborative. So what we faced as a challenge was to find organizations which have the common vision and which have the similar value system. You might find organizations which have similar vision, but finding the organizations with a similar value system is also very difficult. So that was one big principle that we set up when we st started the collaborative. Credibility of organizations. Very important to have the right organizations with the right uh, intent, with the right purpose to be a part of the collaborative. It should be related to the community because we've been at, at times, even when I speak and even now after having been with the collaborative for more than five, four years now, there are times when I speak of us and them and that narrative becomes very, very difficult. And so having tribal community members to be a part of the collaborative to be a part of the um, you know, understanding of the strategy and everything that we design makes it that much more uh, important to the tribal community. So community rootedness and what are the true problems that communities face, which is what need to be picked up. Complementary capabilities, which means that I am very good at uh, health. I need somebody who will be probably good at water and education and uh, uh, you know, a different sector would be a great way to work together. But even within health, I think it's important to look at what is the complement that that other organization brings to the table and how do I sort of work with that organization to make it happen. Networking with a large number of uh, organizations, networking with people, um, large scale, the ability to reach uh, interiors and remote locations, having the right kind of expertise, sector expertise, and lastly, having no conflict of interest. And if you look at a um, large number of organizations, they might have interests specifically in mining, specifically in environmental uh, issues that are so close to tribal communities. So having organizations and people without a conflict of interest and finding them become specific uh, principles that we focus on. With that, we really brought on board a host of partners, technical partners, knowledge partners, implementing partners, funding partners, government, and the community itself. So that is how we really set up the collaborative. I will request my colleague Ashwin to talk about the next part of it where we uh, speak about the way in which we've started working on it. Thank you. Thanks, Shalidra. I think uh, when we went on the pilgrimage, one of the things uh, in the first meeting, a group of tribal uh, healers, uh, we met them, we tried to understand what are the challenges and everything, and they said, what's your intent? Um, and we said, no, no, these are the challenges of tribal areas. Um, we want to work with tribal communities on solving those areas so that maternal mortality, child mortality comes down. And they said that very clearly, nothing for us without us. And that's when we realized that, you know, we can't go with our own traditional public health interventions to work with them. And they need to be at the center of the design. They need to be the decision makers of the design rather than just giving inputs. So that's one of the principles that we've adopted. The second is uh, government. Uh, we individually can do probably 1%, 2%, but the government has the capacity to do uh, reach everyone and there are examples like Aadhaar like you know there are mul multiple examples where social schemes have reached everyone even what Mr. Paramayar spoke about uh, the size and scale at which the government operates nobody can operate so it's extremely important that we work with the government and government is a key partner in this collaborative so whether it's Ministry of Tribal Affairs whether it is MOHFW or state governments they work very closely on the collaborative. And one of the key principles is the ownership itself. It is owned by each of the partner. It's owned by the community as well. We'll not get into the theory part, but more important, like I said, is on the community side, we are working with tribal healers. We're working with tribal youth. We're working with SHGs. We're working with local NGOs. The key component of tribal healers is because they are the first responders in the tribal communities. We talk about, you know, primary health care, ASHAs, a &Ms, but the trust that these tribal people have with healers uh, is huge. And there are more than 100,000 
tribal healers in uh, these areas with whom we are working. Uh, even the government has realized this and come up with a certification process for tribal healers called as primary care providers in tribal areas. And that also shows the trust that the system has with tribal healers now. We're working on certifying them, making them part of the public health system. Can they refer? Can they, uh, you know, partner? Uh, identify high-risk pregnancies, identify TB patients, etc. So, yeah. One of the components of collaborative, like Shalendra mentioned, what are the principles? I'll give you an example that in Bastar Division, we've identified that there is a gap in service provision for diabetes, hypertension, and other minor ailments, which are not covered currently by the ASHA or the ANM in the community. So we identified uh, rural women or tribal women uh, to provide these services. They are called Sangwaris. But more important, the idea came from Bahar Foundation, which is Bangalore-based. The implementation partner is BSJVS, which is a local grassroots NGO in Bastar. And Piramal Foundation, which, is, which brings in the technical assistance to manage this program. So that's how, uh, you know, we've come together to create such small local community-driven solutions to implement. And I think that's how uh, the collaborative should really function. It should not be driven by one single organization. It should not be driven by one single agenda, but really community-driven solutions. The other is, again, how do you work with government system strengthening? And this is where we formed a, a small consortium with USAID, PATH, Japaigo, to build the technical capabilities, to provide technical assistance in the health system to deliver quality uh, service at the grassroots level in these tribal areas. In, um, you know, in tribal areas, like Shalendra said, there is a huge uh, incidence prevalence of TB. And uh, since PM has announced that we need to eliminate TB by 2025, we were given a challenge uh, to you know, reach out to all tribal districts in India. And we ran a campaign called as Ashwasan, where we reached out to three crore tribal populations, we screened one crore tribal people, and were able to detect more than 10,000 patients and put them on treatment. But more important here is that to reach these 3,000 crore tribal people, uh, building that trust, reaching out to the right community influencer, speaking to the right population to mobilize such large uh, population and that too during the COVID pandemic when the second wave and third wave was happening uh, was extremely challenging. But here, how the government also geared up to deliver because our role was to engage with the community, collect the samples, but testing them, uh, you know, putting them on treatment, everything was done by the central TB division and the state and the district TB units. Knowledge is also one of the key components of uh, the collaborative, and we worked with Ministry of Tribal Affairs to come up with various knowledge products for tribal population, whether it is the district fact sheets of the tribal districts, uh, whether it is the HMIS data that gets integrated into the portal. You can see real-time updates of what's happening in these districts for the tribal population, and that also sets up the agenda of governance. This is in the public domain on the MOTA Ministry of Tribal Affairs portal. It's, a, it's called Swasti portal. And you can look at that data, seeing, looking at what's happening real time. You can do research. You can do uh, you know, a lot of publications. There is a repository also of a lot of work done by other organizations in tribal areas. So that gives us a lot of information about tribal communities. Next. Yeah, so that's been a journey till now. Uh, there are challenges as well. Nothing has come so easily for us. And we believe there will be challenges going forward as well because it's a collaborative. So working, um, and Ma'am is sitting here, working with government is also a challenge because there's center, there's state, there's district. Aligning those, uh, it takes time sometimes. Uh, sometimes working with partners is also difficult. We talk about complementary skill sets, but there will be uh, you know, frictions when it comes to domain knowledge. How do you overcome these challenges is extremely important. How mindful are we when working 
with these challenges is also extremely important. So I think trusting each other, trusting each other's capability is extremely important for successful collaboration. Thank you.